Hey there, 8th graders, and welcome to today's LAR lesson. Uh, remember, we're on Unit 2, Past and Present. Um, so uh, we're going to expound upon this today with our objective, which is the students can be able to identify and describe characters and setting details, as well as articulate events that are central to the story's plot. So we just did our agenda. We're going to text and author preview. Then we're going to read and respond, and then you have independent work time uh, with a reading quiz. Uh, in study sync. So here's our text and author preview. The text is The House on Mango Street by the author Sandra Cisneros. Maybe some of you have heard of it. Um, in this excerpt that you're going to read uh, from The House on Mango Street, Sandra Cisneros, the young author or narrator, excuse me, struggles to define herself when she feels challenged by her surroundings and longs for a house that would always belong to her family. So it seems like a little bit of an internal conflict already. So this is Sandra Cisneros. Um, and here are some of the books that uh, she's written. There's a couple of different copies of The House on Mango Street. We have a couple of these here at CJA. Hopefully you guys have heard about some of these. And a little bit about Sandra Cisneros. So she was born in Chicago. Uh, her father was Mexican. Her mother was Mexican-American. Uh, and her experiences as a Chicana, a Mexican-American, caught between two cultures, influenced her depiction of the main character in this novel. So you talked about kind of this worldview a long time ago in Unit 1. Um, so she's going to be writing from her own worldview. Um, so about her writing. So the novel is organized as a series of vignettes, or short descriptive scenes. Each vignette has a title and is a self-contained story. Uh, so have students identify three scenes that are included in this excerpt. Cisneros uses a poetic style exemplified by imaginary and figurative language. Um, and Cisnero published The House on Mango Street in 1984, so it's a bit old. Uh, but the novel is a portrait of a young Latina girl and the neighborhood in which she grows up in. So, um, House on Mango Street was, again, uh, compressed of uh, lyrical vignettes, which center around the Latino girl growing up in Chicago Barrio. Uh, from her little red house, the protagonist, Esperanza, describes her life and the neighborhood around her. In this excerpt, Esperanza gives readers a sense and uh, readers a glimpse into her dissatisfaction with the present and hopes for the future. So um, here's where you're going to read and respond. Your direction. Um, we're going to read each vignette one line at a time with me, and then you're going to respond to each question using the text. Respond in full, complete sentences using text evidence. So here are lines one through eight. They always told us that one day we would move into a house, a real house that would be ours for always, so we wouldn't have to move each year. And our house would be would have running water and pipes that worked. And inside, it would have real stairs, not hallway stairs, but stairs inside like the houses on TV. And we'd have a basement and at least three washrooms so that we could take a bath. We wouldn't have to tell everybody. Our house would be uh, white with trees around it, a great big yard, a grass growing without a fence. This was the house Papa talked about when he held the lottery ticket. Uh, and this was the house Mama dreamed up in the stories she told us before she went to bed. But the house on Mango Street is not that way. They told it all. It's small and red, with tight door steps in front and windows so small you think that you were holding they, they were holding their breath. Bricks are crumbling in places, and the front door is so swollen you have to push hard to get it in. Uh, there is no front yard, only four little elms the city planted by the curb. Out back in a small garage for the car we don't uh, own yet and a small yard that looks smaller between the two buildings on either side. There are stairs in our house, but they're ordinary hallway stairs, and the house has only one washroom. Everybody has to share a bedroom. Mama, Papa, Carlos, Kiki, me, and Nanny. Uh, once, when we were living on Loomis, a nun from my old school passed by and saw me playing out front. The laundromat downstairs had been boarded up because it had been robbed two days before, and the owner had painted on the wood, yes, we're open, so as not to lose business. Where do you live? she asked. There, I said, pointing up on the third floor. You live there? There? I had to uh, look to uh, where she pointed. The third floor. The paint peeling, wood bars, Papa had nailed on the windows uh, so we wouldn't fall out. You live there? The way she said it made me feel like nothing. There? I lived there. I nodded. I, I knew then I had to leave. A I, I had to have a house, a real house, one I could point to. But this isn't it. The house on Mango Street isn't it. Uh, for the time being, Mama says, temporary, says Papa. But I know how those things go. Now that you've answered those questions, we're going to move on to the next segment, lines 9 through 14, and answer the following questions. So, 
In English, my, ne- my name means hope. In Spanish, it means too many letters. It means sadness. It means waiting. It's, it is like uh, the number nine, a muddy color. It is the Mexican records my father plays on Sunday mornings when he is shaving, songs like sobbing. It was my great-grandmother's name, and now it is mine. She was a horse woman, too, born like me in the Chinese year of the horse, which is supposed to be bad luck if you're born female. But I think this is a Chinese lie, because the Chinese, like Mexicans, don't like their women strong. My great-grandmother, I would have liked to know to have known her, a wild horse of a woman, so wild she wouldn't marry, until my great-grandfather threw a sack over her head and carried her off, just like that, as if she were a fancy chandelier. That's the way he did it. And the story goes, she never forgave him. She looked out the window her whole life, the way so many women sit in their sadness on an elbow. I wonder if she made the best with what she had got, or was she sorry because she couldn't be all the things she wanted to be? Esperanza. I have inherited her name, but I don't want her to inherit my place, inherit her place by the window. At school, they say my, my name funny, as if the syllables were made out of tin and hurt the roof of your mouth. But in Spanish, my name is made out of a soft or something, like silver. Not quite as uh, thick as my sister's name, Magdalena, which is uglier than mine. Magdalena, who at least can come home and become Nenny, but I am always Esperanza. I would like to baptize myself under a new name, a name more like the real me, uh, the one nobody sees. Esperanza as Lysandra or Maritza or Zizi, the X, yes, something like Zizi, the X, will do. And finally, you're going to answer these questions from lines 15 through 17. They are the only ones who understand me. I am the only one who understands them. Four skinny trees with skinny necks and pointy elbows like mine. Four who do not belong here, but are here. Four raggedy excuses planted by the city. From our room, we can hear them, but Nanny just sleeps and doesn't appreciate these things. Their strength is secret. They send ferocious roots beneath the ground. They grow up and they grow down and grab the earth between their hairy toes and bite the sky with violent teeth and never quit their anger. This is how they keep. Let one forget his reason for being. They'd all droop like tulips in, in a glass, each with their arms around the other. Keep, 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 trees say when I sleep. They teach. So now that you've answered those questions, you're going to go on to your independent work time. During that time, you're going to do LAR task number 73, which is the first read, the House on Mango Street reading quiz. Please come and check out with Miss Odom in the breakout room when you are done. Make sure you're providing text evidence and responding in eighth grade, almost high school, uh, like complete sentences.